for about 30 years now. But I'm joined by Joe Franco, who was an Australian citizen and lived in the US for a number of years and spent five of those years becoming the Pearl McGowan accredited teacher. Joe is home now and lives in Western Australia. Behind the scenes with us, who will probably peek her head out, is our team member, Kira Mead, yay, who has lived in Australia and is in Albany, uh, Western Australia. We're all new to the production of webinars, particularly one on this scale. We funded it ourselves, and we didn't have the benefit of IT people or staff to give us advice. So bear with us, and if there's any problems, we'll blame it on Kira or Joe. Welcome to this inaugural webinar by the Global Textile Hub. It, depending on where you are in the world right now, it's either Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning, due to the good old international dateline. Now before we go on, just a few bits of light housekeeping. Um, be aware that you are in full control of how this appears on your phone, tablet, laptop, computer. We hope that by now you are in full screen, Look in the upper right hand corner for the little four arrows, and we'd like you to choose speaker mode. That will put Joe and I squarely in the center of your screen. You can write to us during the webinar by clicking on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen in the toolbar. Move your mouse around if you can't find it, click it open, drag it out of the way if it's in your way, Remember, we cannot see or hear you. So if you want to ask a question, make a comment, pertinent remark, it needs to go in that Q&A box. We will try to address those questions towards the end of this. So keep sending your questions in anytime you want. If, however, you find that Q&A box distracting, minimize it or close it out. We decided to do this Global Rug Hub webinar for a couple of reasons. First, we really wanted to build on and strengthen the fabric of our own global networks, and technology makes it so easy now. Second, we thought it was really important for us to contribute Australian stories to the history of rug making, particularly as it happens here in Australia. And unless you've spent time in this country and with rug makers scattered all over the place, you probably don't realize that it does happen differently here. We've had to approach the craft differently, and we have to address some challenges that are really unique to us. For example, to go from the west coast of the US to the east coast of Australia involves a 13-hour airplane flight. And that's just to get across the wet bits. That's not travel. And once you get here, you discover that there are probably fewer than 200 Australian rug makers scattered across a geographic area the size of the continental 48 states of the US. So we're pretty thin on the ground. Joe, I guess I'm gonna kick it to you and say, can you give us your take on why and how Australia has such a different approach to rug making? Thanks, Judy. Well, from my experience, and in the States and my reading, uh, I, I've discovered that basically the craft started in North America and Australia in the same way. Various rug making techniques were brought to the new countries by settlers from the UK and Europe. Um, the difference between the two hemispheres now, as I see it, has to do with the, how the craft evolved from the past to the present. In the late 1800s in the USA, there was a fellow by the name of Edward Sands Frost, and he started the commercialization of rug making by um, printing out rug designs using templates and selling them. Um, in the late, uh, in the, later in the 1920s and 30s, Pearl K. McGowan commercialized the teaching of her techniques. And People, and her students, who went on to become instructors and teach others, used her patterns. So this further sort of created the commercialization of what was basically an old primitive craft. Um, there's five workshops across the USA where accredited teachers come together each week for once a year to share their knowledge with each other and to train new McGowan teachers. 
So that creates a real network of um, experienced rug hooking people that we just don't have here in Australia. In Canada, it's in this same vein, um, in Canada, about the same time in the 20s and 30s, uh, Dr. William Grenfeld was promoting um, the making of rugs in, in Labrador. There was a downturn in the fishing industry, and that's how the economy was supported there. And also from Cheddar Camp in Cape Breton, rugs from there were being promoted and sold in the USA. All of this created a history and a value for the antique rugs that holds to this day. They're still being used and, and treasured because of their, um, their age. This didn't happen in Australia. Um, knowledge of the craft of making rugs, when I say rugs, I mean mats for the floor, came to Australia primarily with the um, transported fam with women and families and then later on with those who voluntarily emigrated from Europe and the UK. Over the years, the craft of making floor coverings from rags, which were basically well-worn scraps of clothing, nothing to look at, fell out of favour for a number of reasons. And maybe I'm going to let you talk about those, Judy. <laughs> well, to my mind, uh, rug making in Australia was fast becoming a lost traditional craft for about three main reasons. Rugs were made on poor quality Hessian feed sacks generally, with fabric that really was pretty well near the end of its life. So the rugs that were made fell to pieces pretty quickly over time, and it's one of the reasons we have very few examples in this country of those old antique rugs. The other, one of the other issues, and it's common to more than just this area, only a few women's crafts were deemed to have value. Things like quilt making and lace making and embroidery and cooking and all those lovely, elegant things. So rag rug making was not seen to be either elegant or culturally valuable. And finally, as migrants prospered after World War II and became more aspirational, they often didn't want to be associated with a craft of thrift. They wanted proper woven carpets. They wanted Axminster maybe from home, in other words, England. And they wanted to replace these tatty handcrafted ones. As a result, rug making skills were simply no longer taught to children. Joe, what, uh, what examples have we got? Do we have any here? We do have some examples. We have them in several museums. Unfortunately, they're not where they can be seen. They're in the archive. Mm -hmm. The Wool Museum in Tasmania has a couple of rugs dating back to the 1800s. And in the Power House, in their archives, which I've actually been into where the rugs are kept, um, they have uh, rugs from the 1920s and 30s. A few of these can now be seen online because they've posted some of this, uh, so some of the collection mm -hmm. uh, in online programs. Um, then in, in South Australia, in the Immigration Museum in Adelaide, there are mm -hmm. rugs made by a group of women who were taught traditional rug hooking by an English woman who migrated to South Australia via Canada in the 1960s, late 1960s. Uh, images of, and more detail mm -hmm. of rugs can be seen in the history section on the Australian Rug Makers Guild website. I do remember in my reading that in the 70s here, we know that latch hooking and Australian locker hooking emerged briefly to sort of give us a flurry of rug making. But it was also during the 70s that Miriam Miller began to teach proggy or proddy rug making here in Australia. Miriam published her book, and by the way, it's the only rug hooking book written in Australia, in about 2008. So as I understand it, Joe, it wasn't until 2008 and the Australian Rug Makers Guild was launched by Judith Stevens, who's current president, and you, and you began to use the internet as an emerging technology and a way to focus on and promote rug making drug crafting here. So it wasn't until all this stuff happened and was in place that this nearly lost traditional craft actually re-emerged with a bit of vigor in Australia. Actually, Judy, it started a little bit before 2008. 
In 2006, Judith and I decided to nominate Australia as the host country for the International Guild of Hand Hooking Rug Makers. At that point, we could count the number of rug makers we knew in Australia on one hand. Our nomination was lodged in February 20, 2008, and, uh, and then the Guild was formed later in that year. This October, the October 5th and 6th, there'll be a celebration of its formation for the last 10 years and with a weekend event back where it all began in Strathalbyn, South Australia. It's a free event and it'll be open to the public. An immense amount of work was done during the two years prior to our 2012 International Conference in South Australia. And it's easy to overlook, but we worked relentlessly to learn how to use the new technologies available like Skype and online newsletters, websites, blogs, mm -hmm. and finally, social media, to make our international outreach and networking activities include the members and others interested in what we were doing down under. The success of this inclusive international event that Judith planned, um, which launched Australia onto the world stage of rug making, I might add, um, and virtually overnight enlarged our network of online friends. We've enjoyed return visits from uh, those who gave presented workshops and have fielded a large number of requests from attendees who would love to come back. But um, um, unfortunately, as Judy said, the, the this trip is, is a long, a lot of people for various reasons can't make that non-stop flight. And of course the yeah. cost is, is yeah. pretty prohibitive. Yeah. 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 So that's sort of, is why we're somewhat removed and, and it's, it's difficult. Those of us who live here just know if we want to do anything or go anywhere, we just have to save up and spend the money to travel. Um, Joe and I have now been trying to edge this traditional craft into some different directions since we started working together in 2010. And we've worked to develop uh, a new website that incorporates more diversity and range of rug making techniques. We certainly acknowledge the need to preserve the traditional craft and the craft's traditions. But at the same time, we're incorporating an even greater number of technology options like today's webinar, online workshops, meetings, we want to expand our networks into your networks. It's the social networking, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Skype, the huge array of blogs and websites and better access to the internet that we believe is encouraging new, new learners to seek out the information, the resources, and the contacts to use traditional rug making techniques for more than rugs. Our work now with various websites gave both of us some experience and perhaps the courage uh, to extend our online hooking adventures to create the first virtual mixed media challenge and exhibition in 2018, Reimagined. And there are a few um, Australian attendees who were also involved in that challenge. Frankly, we were flabbergasted that it was so successful. So with that in mind, I want to let you know now that we will be offering another virtual challenge and exhibition, this time on a worldwide basis, and it'll be in 2021. A spoiler alert for you. This time your challenge will involve you in a collaboration with another artist from any medium. This means you will need to collaborate with another person on a shared vision or a common theme or concept and figure out a way for both of you to produce a joint finished work. We're gonna be interested to hear from you and we'll, we'll welcome those comments on this uh, challenge. Watch for details though on it, um, on the Global Textile Hub, Facebook and blog, and on our reimagined Facebook page. Um, we'll, we'll, we just won't do it right away. Um, we've been talking, Joe, quite a little bit about our differences between the two hemispheres, but it seems to me that there are two issues that all rug makers and craft people seem to wrestle with, and that focuses on 
how do you find a home for your stash, your tools, your equipment, or gigaws that you can't use, don't want to use, or, or don't know what to do with anymore? And how can we share our knowledge, skills, and experience to preserve this craft, particularly in this high-speed, technologically oriented world? The ground has shifted beneath our feet. Joe, you came up with a really interesting idea to address both the stash issue and passing it on so you could involve new learners. What did you do? Well, Judy, before I answer that, I have been monitoring the question and answer box. Ah, the good. Screen. I'm glad somebody and, was. I saw one. <laughs> and, and Joan has asked me a question. Oh. She wanted to know, is wool fabric yarn really cheap in Australia? How much per yard? Um, and in Australian dollars, and they can convert it. Well, this was, I was going to talk about this. I wow. wrote an article in 2012 in Rug Hooking magazine, and I bemoaned the fact that we can't get wool fabric here. And of course, everybody was um, absolutely stunned. You've got all these sheep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, sheep yeah, gets yeah. Born, the wool goes offshore, and it's, it's milled and it's woven in fabrics in other places, and it comes back to us, and it's extremely expensive by the time yeah. we're looking for wool fabric. Apart from that, the, con the weather conditions are here. We don't use a lot of wool unless you live down in Victoria right now it's pretty cold and it's actually snowing in Victoria but for most of the country um, we're sort of a Mediterranean climate or even desert climate so wool is not something that's used a lot and we use t-shirts and other stuff so what happened after this um, article went in the paper in the newsletter and um, the group in California I think they were in Southern yeah. California. I forgot yeah. now, but it, it was 2012. Um, and they sent me this huge box. I mean, a great big carton of already cut wool strips. And what they'd done, of course, was they'd gone around the group and gathered up all those worms, as we call mm -hmm. them, that you have when you've got to finish your project. And the next project, unfortunately, you just have to dye a whole bunch more fabric or, or shop for it. And that pile of worms just there's dust in the corner so anyway these came to me and I've been since 2012 I've been using those in the, the community demonstrations that I give so with this thought in mind I thought it was such a good idea why didn't we do something and carry it on so at the Wanneroo group the rug make community rug making group that I belong to um, I asked there and we all looked through our stash and we gathered up a bunch of stuff and can be filled up to, I don't know if you know what the size of a big mail bag looks like, not the postage bags that you post in, but the, the bags that the mail goes in. Well, at Double my local bag. post office, we filled two of those bags and they were sent to a group in the Northern Territory, a group of Indigenous people who have not learned to hook yet, but Sue is going to, she's got a copy in there in the book and she's going to teach them. So it, there was great excitement when Sue received these, all of this stuff in the mail. Uh, felt a little bit um, strange by sending them, you know, sort of what we would have thought was cast-offs. But she said, when you haven't got any money for material, just anything that you get your hands on is good. So it's going to be fun to see what they come up with um, from their interpretation of the traditional craft that, that we've we've all sort of taken in a different way. So, I think um, I think before we go to Susan in Ohio, we've got a little bit of time. One one definition I thought worth mentioning is for those of us in that know about the North uh, and their definition of a rug. A rug to us there in the U.S. and to my grandmother in the Michigan, a rug was a thing you put on the floor. When I came here and I kept talking about rugs, I was wrong. A rug is a thing you put on the bed. Yeah, like it's a blanket. A rug's a blanket. <laughs> not, not on the floor. <laughs> so, and it's a mat here. A thing you put on the floor is a mat. So, uh, we've had, just so you know, a mat and a rug they are different terms. That's another one of the little confusing bits of stuff. And the other that. interesting bit, I'm going to butt in here like I was oh, sure. sure. <laughs> the other interesting bit is that when people in the US say wool, they mean wool fabric. 
When we say wool, we mean wool yarn. So everything that's written here now, every, everything that we publish, because we know we're being read both places, we will say wool fabric or wool yarn. We just, yeah, make the distinction because yeah, it's yeah. real confusing. Yeah, because it's just so, the opposite to both both countries. It's like everything else. It's it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just thought that was worth um, um, uh, mentioning at this point. Just as a reminder to all of you, um, this uh, session has been recorded, and I'm just looking for my screen. I've disappeared somehow. Um, it's been recorded and it along with the video will be available for replay as soon as we finish here today I think it might some of it might be even up uh, on the, um, the web right now but it's going to be available on Kira Mead's YouTube channel we will post links to that on the global textile hub blog and Facebook but you can also search uh, YouTube on Kira Mead and you'll find all of her videos. Give her a half an hour or so to get all this stuff organized. Kira is also going to post a poll on your screen at some point here. It'll be a little annoying box in the middle of your screen. Drag it off if you need to, but it's just a tick box and we'd like to know what you think, what you're interested in. Uh, tick the little boxes that are relevant and submit it and Kira will have there it your is right now. Here it is, it's lovely. It's up in the middle of my screen, so I'm gonna drag it. And, push and, it off to the side. and we're told we're told that the host and panelists cannot vote, so we just get to be annoyed by it, but not get to use it. So I've dragged mine off sides. Uh, well, actually, do, I got rid of mine. That, I... Tick those boxes and submit that before you leave today, if you would please. I also want to take a moment now, on behalf of Joe, Kira, and myself, to thank Susan Feller for facilitating. This webinar at Soder Village, and thanks to Rug Hooking Week for their support. It's near. And if you wonder why we're looking a little bit distracted, it's because we're both watching the Q and A. The other, the it's other boxes on the bottom of our screen that tell us what's happening. And I'm told that Susan's ready. Uh, well, Susan's just ready a waiting. second, because I'm not done. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, Susan's group does need to leave at 7 30. we will continue this webinar after they leave and i'm going to just kick it over to you susan hello susan is our susan there where is she there she is hello. is she here i've just lost oh, hi, susan. here we are have you got your microphone on maybe what do you yeah. think there yes Okay. There's, All right. There's our girl. All right. Hi. Hi, Liz. Oh, look at them all. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Souter Village Rug Hooking Week. Wish I was there. <laughs> yes. And we are so glad to have listened to you guys talking away. Um, <laughs> As you can see, we have a lot of people gathered, and the hall is filled with rugs and oh. all week long. Yeah. Do you have any questions uh, for us from that group, uh, Susan? Uh, you might as well keep the floor for as long as you want it, and, and you have to go, because we'll keep this uh, webinar running for anybody else that's interested. Leslie. I have one question, and it's just, when's the next virtual event? When's the next virtual hook in from Leslie from Well, the virtual hook the the challenge. The virtual hook. You want another one of these? Oh yeah, sure. Like oh yeah, sure. this has taken uh, us the last twelve months. Well, since since February this year, we've been working solidly on this. And we've had to get very firm with Kira to make her do this. You know, she's really she's a champ. You know, I hate to say that, but she is. Um, and I like her work too. How come you're not up here, Kira? You should be on the screen too, maybe. Uh, any other questions? We we just really wanted you to kind of have an idea that stuff we do is really yeah, is is had to be done differently. You know, the materials we don't have frame makers and hook makers and backing fabric, and you know, we have to order everything in from the U.S. if we want. Uh, monk's cloth, you can't get that here. Um, things like that. So we've had to become a little bit more uh, creative, make do sort of thing 
and um, it's a it's a whole different way. It's just yeah. different. It's not better. It's just different. It's different. I've mentioned that before, and I've had Canadians say to me, "Well, we are a big country too, and we're a few numbers spread." But when you're shipping something in from the U.S. to Canada, um, it, it's not the cost that it is when you ship it from North America, either Canada, because there's now a lot of toolmakers in Canada. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, when you're shipping from either of those places, everything that we use is heavy. I mean, the, the, the wool cutters are heavy, the frames oh. are heavy, and um, the cost of shipping is just ex really... It's prohibiting. Added. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I live but to serve, yes. Uh, <laughs> but um, so that's why we've evolved some different techniques using, you know, more bizarre fabrics or items uh, than perhaps they have done in the U.S. I know a lot of them do, and I always talk about this as a continuum from the, the, the primitive, and I don't mean that crudely, but the, the early, very simple works onto high art and there's everything in between. And I think that's what makes us so interesting is that we see such an array of wonderful fiber textile art in all sorts of permutations. On the uh, chat box, we have a message from Janine and she's just asking how many rug hookers there are in Australia today. I'll kick well, that to Jo, I think she'd be in better position. We've got about 120 that are members of the Guild and, and personally I know of a half a dozen more. Um, there's been a, a big a surge in popularity in um, the Oxford Punch, and there's a there's one of our members, um, Claire Thornley, has a business because she's she does um, yarns for spinners and weavers, and she's the um, she sells the Oxford Punch here in Australia, and yeah. she's told me that she's she's given uh, instruction and sold punches to a great number of people. Um, and there's one of those ladies in Victoria in Melbourne and she's got a commercial studio It's called the studio and she um, She teaches she teaches children's groups and the best thing I thought was her latest thing She had these four best friends who were celebrating oh, a 40th yeah. birthday And so they had their own private lesson complete with wine and cheese and um, chocolates and I thought what a way to have a birthday party and, and they came away, they did a little round in, a, in an embroidery hoop. So, you know, for the, for the evening of the, the event, they came away with something finished and the knowledge yeah. of how to pull a few loops and, or, you know, yeah. in that case. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've just had notification that the last question on the questionnaire, it, um, it should have been a multi-choice. And it hasn't been. It's only shown up that you can select one answer. So uh, if there were other answers that you wanted to say, yes, we want to see more of this, please just put it in the chat box because that'll be recorded and we'll, we'll be able to have access to it after the meeting. Yeah, yeah. What else? From the Ohio team, you don't have much more time, but... Um, I wanted uh, to introduce some of the people that are here specifically. Sure, sure. Um, we have Deb Smith from Rug Hooking Magazine. Yay! Hi, Deb. And thank heavens we have Kathy Wright <laughs> as the oh, yes. Village coordinator. Good. Uh, here. Uh, Stephanie Krauss from Green Mountain Hook Rugs. Ah, okay. Michelle Wise from all the way from Washington State. I'm um, doing real quick. Christine Hornsby from Michigan. Oh, we yes. Mm -hmm. People in Ohio, right here. Yeah, we have the North, Northwest Ohio group. Uh, this, this is a really great setup. The Global yeah. Hub in the middle, and we have the Northwest Ohio Rug Hookers Craft Guild next to me. And we also have the Old Forge from Ottawa on the other side. Oh, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And the global hub in the middle. That's what. Yay! Was Hurrah! Well, this is amazing. I was going to mention Stephanie Krauss and her family um, in my little historical blur because last year when I was there, I listened to her presentation with sister and and, and daughter about um, the five generations of rug hookers. I mean, that's that's sort of 
hard to imagine five generations. Yeah, we're, no. we're, we're really scrounging to find. <laughs> okay, I missed that joke. <laughs> Not as old as it sounds with five generations. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> really part of that generation. The end. Of Thank that you so much, Joe. Appreciate it. So we're very excited. We we would encourage more of this happening. That's yes. a general. We we, we really think it's the way to go. I mean, I taught a woman in Holland how to hook over Skype. Uh, we think really that we need to factor in more and more of the technologies to bring in. If we believe that this is a craft uh, 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 we want to save, that we want to promote, we need to bring in new people. We need to... Uh, we need to teach teachers to teach. We need to include more younger people and the technologies at the same time, I think. Otherwise, some yes. sometimes we have to do things a little differently. When we put the um, challenge out to all textile artists, um, obviously it had to, it, one of the, the, the requirements of the brief, it had to have one uh, rug making technique. Yeah. Well, not everybody's gonna be able to rush off and get the tools and learn how to do traditional rug making. Um, it's a little easier with Proddy because you just need something sharp and, a, and an open weave. So we sort of scoured around and we came up with 12 different ways that you could make a rug. And they basically, a lot of them are pretty much like crochet. So it was just to get people into this, into this sort of um, group and once they became interested in rug making and they could see all the wonderful things that you've got on display there at Sorter. I mean, those those are works of art. They're just, just mm. amazing, some of those pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made. Yeah. People say, but that's a photograph, you know, it looks like a photograph. But uh, in order to get them in, we start very simply and just with something small that they can finish quickly. The, I think the other aspect that we continue to run into trying to use technology is the fact that the work that we produce is tactile. It's, and if you do anything sculptural, people want to rush out and fondle it. And, but you can't do that on the net. And so that's, that is a, an inhibitor in a way, but people do seem to be getting around that with other using photography differently, or perhaps we have to do more videoing of items, but um, I th we still think this is the best way, and especially with us in this country, scattered so thinly on the ground um, that, you know, it, it's a, the distances are just really hard for people to grasp. Even folks from the US who are living in a continental landmass the same size as Australia, you don't just go to Perth and then decide to drive for the weekend to Adelaide. It ain't gonna happen, folk. It, it, it's just too far. So it's the same way with trying to catch up with rug makers here. You need to let us know in advance and we'll see if we can get a little cluster of them to, to travel in from the hinterland and, and meet with you. But um, it is it is tough and this is the best way for us to communicate. Stay, uh, the new Q&A that's just come up from a, oh a pedal um, and she is saying for connecting with young people, uh, have you thought about using this type of technology, webinars, seminar, pre-recorded videos, Twitter chats, to attract a younger audience in order to keep the craft, craft thriving into the future? I think that's what this is that's going to try to do. That's why we've right. initiated it. Yeah. But again, remember, uh, Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail here paid for all of this um, and our time, money and tra-la-la because we think it's important to do. But then you have to begin to look at the cost. You know, you're going to have to charge somehow to get to afford to do this sort of thing. And we don't have any organizations uh, to support us. The Guild itself, the Australian Rug Makers Guild is not incorporated and we don't want to be incorporated because that involves gum and all the record keeping and the aggravation. So you're right, yes, this is probably the best way. We will be looking probably to put in a, a spoke of this hub uh, that involves tutoring workshops, but we need to offer stuff that can't be just gotten for free on YouTube or Google or on Kira's video. 
link. Um, you know, so that's the other challenge, I think. And um, I don't know. I mean, we're open to suggestions, and we look forward to hearing uh, all of your great ideas that we can steal. <laughs> well, we should have we should have had we should have had this a long time ago because when we since the uh, guild began in Australia, because each member of the committee lives in a different state, we can't have a committee meeting. Yeah. We can't get together for a committee meeting. So we've been doing it on Skype. And Skype yep. has been, it's all right, but it doesn't support um, more than a couple of people talking. And then no. if you make a noise in the background, Judy, if you make a noise in the background, <laughs> it cuts out the person that's speaking. So this is so much better than, than what we've been using before. I'm being really how many, quiet how many now. That is endless. Don't get her singing. Hey? <laughs> Don't get her singing. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you can see we've had a lot of fun putting this together. <laughs> it's, really, it's the only way to go, um, <laughs> really. And as long as we keep both of them medicated, it's easy for me. <laughs> Susan, I noticed it's 7.32, and I know you guys have to be out of this. Do you have any last um, thing you'd like to add? Yes, yes. Um, oh, you do. I do. <laughs> oh, no, no so I don't. True. She doesn't. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, conversations and gathering a lot of information by questionnaires all week so I'll be feeding that right. in and inviting everyone to contribute to the global textile hub.com any questions that they might have I'm sure there's a way to find contact and emailing thank yep. you ladies yep. thanks so thanks bye. Susan bye ladies thanks for coming thank you uh, bye okay <laughs> see you in real time sometime soon. Yes. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right. There we go. Well done. Um, do we have, we had a few questions coming in. I think we kind of, had, we've had a lot of warm fuzzies from lovely people. Um, and um, there, Jennifer Peddle, you know, she said, so, oh yeah, social networking. We've done that a little bit. Yes. Um, Anything else that anybody out Meryl, there in the room? Meryl says hello. Hello, Meryl. Hi, Meryl. And um, I will, uh, I'll just finish this poll so you can see, so you ladies can see the results. So I'm hoping that they will pop up on your screen. There we go. Boy, I'm just moving some stuff out of the way here. Oh, there's the other stuff out of my way. Um, so obviously they're more interested in online workshops as we've been doing today, which is fantastic. <clears throat> a lot of them use online workshops, YouTube, social media, blogs for guidance. Where am I supposed to find this? I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the uh, poll. Did you? I minimized. Okay. It Share now I can't find it. Go. Oh, okay. It now? Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Now I got it. Yep. Okay, yep. Judy, you might like to go through them. Okay, you want Judy, me to read them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the results. What are you, you, are you interested in online workshops? Um, yes, um, we've had, I think so far, 18 people respond there. Online information and workshops, YouTube, social media for guidance. Do you use those online sources? Again, they're saying yes. Are you a paid subscriber for online workshops or webinars? Mostly no. There are a few folks that do. I'm just dragging this thing down now. Uh, do you meet socially in a closed group, or does your group welcome new members? Um, I don't know what two means. I don't have, it just says one, two, and three, Kira. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what, there are a lot of twos. <laughs> that was um, me. That was just me mucking up again. You know it's all my fault. It would be yes, no, and don't know, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I think there was a multiple choice on that there one. was that one, and so I don't know what two stood for. Oh, oh, I say group a closed group is one. Most groups welcome oh, new members. Yeah, one number one is does your group welcome new members? Number two, um, are you not in any group? I don't know what I had for number three. I'm sure it was good. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was too. But. Well, I, I think the not in any group is is that's why they're they're interested in this online because they can, either they can't get to a group or there isn't one. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So this way of coming together, even just for workshops, um, yep. 
Yep. But, but besides, I was going to say, besides workshops, it gives you a mm. feel of um, community. Community, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I know we do that through social media, but it's it's this is just one yeah. step closer. Yeah. I think. It looks like most people do share images of their work online, and I think that's really how we learn about other people's stuff and techniques. Um, and But interestingly, most people don't watermark shared images, and that will could rise as uh, copyright issues for those that are trying to sell or sell online. You really need to protect yourself in terms of copyright. Um, and selling online, most don't sell online, which is why they probably don't worry about the watermarking. And for people who work on their own, does work does being online work for you? And they said, you betcha. So that looked really good. Um, and would you like to see, what, what would you like to see from the Global Textile Hub? Um, well, they want more webinars and particularly more how-to videos. Uh, well, I'd be interested to know what it is they want to know how to with, that we can offer that isn't already available because there's so much stuff out there in the real world um, on Google and every other option. So if you have more ideas on what specifically you would like a video on, we're tickled to death to try and do with it. Um, Michelle, most, Michelle has asked once, when you talk about webinars, what type of things do we have in mind? I guess we're talk, we've been talking yeah. about a huge range of things, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're kind of open and we're just using it in a way as a throwaway term because you can do anything you want in a webinar. It's a seminar on the web. It's a webinar. And, and you, can have a, you can have a workshop, which is, okay. a little one to, again, one step better than a YouTube video because in the YouTube video, somebody shows you and you yeah. think, oh, you know, you just miss a step or you don't see it clearly. But in, in a situation like this, as you just saw where we had Susan on, um, mm -hmm. you, the instructor could uh, give one-on-one -on -one help to somebody who paid for the video. <laughs> the yeah, webinar. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and Gail Nichols has said, uh, she's thanked us for our work and generosity, but she said, seriously, we need to talk about ways of funding and sharing costs of future online communications. We're well aware of that. And, um, but we thought it was important to do a freebie, for sure, to, to demonstrate what the capacity of something like this was to link people across the globe in, in, in a real-time situation. So, um, we're looking for more ideas, and um, we know that uh, Kira herself has got a little production company that can produce videos for groups and do things magical, and we want her to do it for us for free forever, of course. Well, <laughs> last year when I was at Soda Village, I was speaking to a lady from Canada where it's very cold and snowy. She wanted to know if it would be possible to have a webinar that was private because yeah. they'd like to have their group not have to go through the icy roads and that's right the weather but no, they need to be able to meet through those winter months without yeah. having to go out but they didn't really want to share it with the world so there is there is a way to do this where you only those of you who get the link um, see it so you could have your group and everybody could talk just like you do just like we 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 do use Skype sometimes for meetings but it's not as good even the subscription skype service where you can get a number of like up to nine people but i happen to live in an area of australia that the hot and cold running nbn electricity is pretty lousy big chunks of the day and the little squirrel that runs in the wheel to make the electricity just doesn't handle sending mail even so the, this one through Zoom does seem to be a better way to access people with a consistent standard and quality of, of video and audio. So you can try this, the easy stuff if you have a very small group, FaceTime or, or Skype, but if you really want to gather in people from a disparate area and many more people, I think these sorts of um, platforms are the way to go. There was a, a question about, uh, and this is from the video, uh, there was a Canadian rug hooker uh -huh. and she was attacking her bit of artwork with a hammer and she just wondered what she was doing. 
That was in Michelle Sarah Silver's um, oh, yes. walk. And Michelle does a lot of surface um, surface design work. And there's a lot of, of um, embellishment that goes on her work. So she could have been putting a grommet or even something, tacking something through the actual work onto her backing. So I think uh, Michelle is still online, so she might she's she might had put a few things in the Q and A. She might be able I to remember what what that particular stand on that. Um, but um, uh, I, well, I'm pleased that everybody seems to be pleased with this. That that's always the worry is that you're either doing something that's been done before, or you're boring people out of their tiny minds. And I think that we've done a real good reach with seven countries and three continents to uh, to promote this kind of an activity. Michelle just confirmed that she was in fact hammering grommets. Grommets, <laughs> that's, that's dead. I, I've studied a lot of Michelle's work and I know there was a lot that had grommets in it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, anything else or shall I just, get ready to close her down. Oh, well, Bridget has just asked um, how people will be able to see the videos. Okay. Um, well, you're probably in the best position to answer that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if you go to YouTube and type in Kira Mead and look for rug hooking videos, you can subscribe to my channel um, and you will have access to all of them there. Uh, as soon as this webinar is finished, I will make the one that you have seen today live uh, and after I've had a bit of a chance to fool around with uh, the video of this recording, I will then load that up. But that will take about half an hour to an hour to, to happen. There's so also on, my turn. <laughs> There's also on Kira's channel a lot of the Australian guilds, the, the videos that she did. And there's some very interesting ones there of what p different groups have done and also yeah. an exhibition that we had coast to coast. And, yeah. and, some, of, and some of Judy's strange work. You know, I mean, when you see Chuck on a ladder, you really need to watch that. <laughs> and for everybody else that doesn't come from Australia, a chook is a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good. You're doing good at this translation stuff. Uh, we will be putting the links to these videos as well on the Global Rug Hub Facebook and blog sites. We'll, we'll scatter it around. But if you want a quick go, then just go to yeah. YouTube and search for Kira Mead. And look at her video selection. She's got quite a lot of stuff available. But please uh, any follow us on the Global Rug Hub Facebook yes. and video uh, website because this we each have a page on that, and we'll go off in our various directions. But yep. you'll yep. hook together on that yep. one. Yep, yep, yep. So, any other questions from the the real world? We'll give you a few seconds because we know it takes a while for the ether to translate through the magicness of electricity and electrons to get here. Um, but uh, we don't want to, we don't want to hold up people too long or Kira too long, but we're happy to stay hours and hours if you want. I mean, I don't, <laughs> Joe and I just leave our Skype open and talk all the time. Um, <laughs> anything else? Oh, Any someone, comments? Someone's just put up in the question and answers um, a link to the YouTube, which is very nice. Oh, bless their heart. <laughs> so you could go they are sharp. These people are quick, I tell you. <laughs> no, it's these hookers, I don't know. There we did have a bit of a worry about first timers with webinars. I mean, if you've if you've done a webinar, mm -hmm. you know how it works, but sometimes we were a little bit afraid that some who had registered might not have actually made it because it, 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 when you sign in, it comes up sometimes and, and explains to you how you can go about seeing the webinar if it doesn't automatically pop up on your screen. And if you're not familiar with the terms, computer terms, you might think, oh, it's too hard and just go away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Judy, I think that's all for the questions. All right. We'll, we'll just offer our thanks to everyone who sent in an amazing number of photos, ideas, videos for this Rug Hub event. Uh, remember, if your material was not used in this short video setup, and it was short, um, and you asked, or, you know, questions were you asked weren't answered, um, we will set up a bunch of posts on the Global Textile Hub. 
using your images and incorporate them into posts, blog posts, we'll maybe do some special features during the coming months. So your materials will be used. We just couldn't squeeze it all into this amount of time. If the video and the discussion today has made you think of other issues or topics, or you just want to write to us, please do. You can contact G uh, Kira, Joe, or myself through the Global Textile Hub, Facebook or blog, and or rugcraftingaustralia at gmail.com. Rugcrafting Australia is all one word, lowercase. Goodbye for now, and we'll see you at our next webinar. Bye. Bye. Bye.